it's been a really tough year. Can you believe it's been a year? Um, I think we entered into this pandemic figuring we'd ha be able to ramp up and supply the needs of our community and then ramp down and we could kind of come up for air. And we've been kind of um, underwater for months, right? Um, really um, overextending our staff and they're, they're tired. And, and they're, especially our leaders have been, um, there's some burnout and, but they're hopeful. We have new hope now. And I think that's injected all of us with a little bit of a booster shot of energy to push through this final stretch that is probably gonna be longer than we want, but we know that there's good at the end of this. higher volume of COVID patients than the spring, probably by about double. And we experienced a surge after Thanksgiving and we experienced a surge after Christmas and that was our highest surge to date. Uh, we have yet to exceed um, 30 patients. We've stayed under 30 patients in our building at one time with COVID, but we have had times when our intensive care unit was uh, full enough that we had to route patients to our other Swedish campuses and to neighboring hospitals as well. So we're not where we were two weeks ago. Uh, so it, it appears as though the surge from Christmas is on the downswing. And in keeping with that, even some of our, our, um, our employees, our caregivers, the, the nurses and physicians and, and all the support folks who help take care of patients, um, some of them became ill with COVID. So we had a lot of sick calls, which made it really tough on us to staff um, our needs. However, our sick calls are now on the downswing. So, uh, and it tends to follow the, the COVID surge. You know, our, our hospital census um, and our sick calls trend together. And that's unfortunate because when we have sicker patients and a higher number of them, we need more staff to care for them. So we've been able to staff and share with our uh, Swedish campuses um, in other locations. And we're really excited that it's on the downswing, but we're not out of the woods yet. We're not out of the woods. So um, we need all of you to help be a part of bringing down that number. Uh, in fact, one of our um, strategies to make sure we have room for sick COVID patients is to reduce the number of elective operations, surgeries that we do. And those have been shut for the better part of a month. Um, and we are looking at reopening those in sequence. So we're just now able to start getting back to that backlog. So if you have a surgery scheduled that got postponed, you might be in touch with your surgical team because we expect in the coming weeks that we'll be able to accommodate that in a very staged rollout. So we have two vaccines with um, very high uh, rates of success, uh, but we haven't tested them in 30 million people yet, right? So. Um, two brands, you've probably read about them in the news. We've got the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine, and we've been administering both of those to our Swedish caregivers and also to our phase one healthcare workers throughout our community. We've distributed, I think now, 23,000 of those vaccines. Um, so we're making our way through um, our own and our, our neighboring healthcare providers. Um, and thus far, the rollout is not as fast as we'd like it to be, but it's been safe and, and we're reaching out to make sure we don't forget any of those um, folks before we move on to phase 1B. So in phase 1B, which might be in the coming days, uh, the Washington uh, governor's office is helping us navigate through this staged rollout. And we will simply follow the rollout as they dictate. Um, 1B will occur as the next stage. So that'll be essential workers and the vulnerable elder population in our community. So be watching for posts from us on how to sign up for those opportunities. 
we do have um, a new clinic site downtown at Seattle University. Oh, so it's not in a hospital building, right? It's good. Uh, where we will be extending that first invitation for our phase 1B. We're hoping to have a strategy for the east side soon thereafter. So please stay tuned. We want to come out here to, our, to, to supply our neighbors' needs. Um, however, if you are a patient of Swedish Medical Group, there will be vaccine clinics starting at the Swedish Issaquah campus that will take place on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And I believe that's about a week away. So you may wish to contact your primary care provider office in the coming week. And chances are very soon you'll be able to sign up for a vaccine if you are in the vulnerable phase 1B group. And if you're not sure what group you're in, you can go to the Washington State Department of Health phase finder and you can check out what phase you're in. And then as the phases roll out, we will continue to widen the net and invite everyone in. So first of all, thank you, Michelle Enabo, for um, helping supply the needs of our staff and helping boost our morale during some really dark months. And thank you to the community partners and our local restaurants and our local businesses that have come alongside and shown appreciation. I can't tell you how much it warmed my soul. I, I'm a Highlands resident and when I go under the pedestrian walkway next to Swedish and I see the signs and I see the bows that people put on our trees and the signs going into our parking lot, just knowing that you're behind us gives us the fuel that we need to do the important stuff that we do day to day for our patients. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you because it's very meaningful sometimes when you're invisible or forgotten or criticized. Um, it's good to know that we have the support of our community because we're, we're putting our lives on the line because we want to protect you. it's tough for us to manage a lot of um, donation efforts. Um, we had to kind of centralize a donation process. And it's uh, right now, we're busy taking care of sick people. We, we are in the middle of a COVID surge and it probably doesn't feel like it unless you or a loved one is affected. But um, we're in a worse surge than we were back in March and April when we were all shuttered and scared. And we're gonna surge now. And so um, we need our community to continue to respect, you know, the physical distancing and continue to wear your mask in the community and continue to wash your hands and try not to, to spend a lot of time out and about indoors with people in areas where you could either get infected or transmit COVID. We don't want you as a patient with COVID. I mean, we will happily take care of you, but we want you to be healthy and safe and not have to come in our doors. So number one is please do what you can to keep yourself and your family and your neighbors safe. So number two, we, I don't think we have a lot of needs. We actually have uh, plenty of personal protective equipment. In fact, um, those of us who work in the trenches have become kind of choosy about the exact type of PPE that we like. And we've occasionally had some constraints from our supply chain for specific brand names or specific sizes. And to my knowledge, we no longer have any supply constraints. So we are not in a position where we need donated equipment or protective equipment. And unfortunately we can't take things like homemade masks and homemade equipment. Um, and as much as we love food, for some of us, food is our best reward. Um, we can't accept um, unpackaged food items. Um, the things that we do accept uh, need to go through our donations channels um, and need to be packaged in individual portions. So that's really hard for our community members to do. Even easy things like cookies and cupcakes, which ordinarily we're happy to take and share. Um, we just simply can't use those right now. So. Um, we would appreciate your safety measures more than, than your donation of gifts, PPE, or food at this point. So one other opportunity for those who want to help is that you can actually sign up as a volunteer in our COVID vaccine clinic. 
The current one available now is at Seattle University downtown. There may be east side opportunities becoming available. I'm working on it. Um, but if you want to help, you go to covidvaccineseattle.org. There are two places that you can see on the screen. One is a sign up for how to get your vaccine if you're in a 1B. Once we turn on 1B, you can sign up for your vaccine there. You can also sign up as a volunteer to help staff our vaccine clinic. And there are lots of roles. There are clinical roles where if you have the credentials, you can be a vaccinator or you can help draw up medication. There are also simple roles like helping people register and helping navigate people through our space, um, helping at entry control. And we will train you how to do those activities. So we'll be uh, staffing that clinic for many weeks and probably months into the foreseeable future. And we'll definitely be needing our local folks to help us out in that effort. And hopefully I'll get you an east side strategy so you don't have to drive across the bridge. We are proud to be your community partner and your hospital. Swedish Issaquah is my hospital too. This is where I bring my kids. This is where I've been. I've been in our emergency room. So um, I know what it's like to be a patient and it's, it's just glorious to have that right here on our back door stop so that we can access the care that we need. Thank you and stay healthy.